Um, okay. Just me. Yeah. All right. Welcome to uh, August well, 22nd, Constituent Conservation Meeting. Um, just a couple of quick things here. The Town of Situate Commitment Statement to Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Situate Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during our meetings. We ask that all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and mature minority as communities to feel welcome and respected. And we ask committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards and support and respect our community. Um, this meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. Um, so then we have an agenda this evening and does anybody want to make any amendments, changes, additions to the agenda? If I I I have two two things. If we have time, they don't have to be discussed tonight. But one would be Mordecai Lincoln, which we now own, the town owns, mm -hmm. and the other is um, I'd just like to know the status of One Fifty First Parish. Okay. Um, and I'll give you a little update on um, trails and whatnot, if we have time. Again, it's going okay. to be a, a long one. but uh, Well, a okay. lot I think we're going to close quick, but I don't know. All right, I so I'll make a motion. We accept the agenda as written with the add-ons from myself and Frank. Okay, and that's from Penny. So can I have a second? Second, Andy. Thank you, Andy. All in favor? Um, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. I'm here too. And Rich? I'm oh, here. Oh, yay. Hi, Rich. Hello. Sorry I was late. Sorry That's about okay. That. Um, so did I get everybody? For tonight, we're out Doug and we're out and Jen. Jen, right? Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So, Amy, are we going to start with um, Chief Justice Cushing? Yes, we've got okay. Bob Gray on the line. I'm going to unmute him um, and we'll go right into that discussion. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members. Bob, thanks for being with us tonight. Um, well, I hope I can help you. <laughs> No, we'll, we'll try at it. Um, Amy, do you want to give us a little recap first of, of where we're at? Uh, well, sure. Okay. So we've got these two enforcements on. Um, we've been carrying them on our agendas since this since the spring, when we had a um, tree cutting incident happen at one eighty four CJC Highway and two hundred eight CJC Highway, and. And anyways, and so, you know, as, as you know, we we have um, two separate um, cases going here because there's two separate owners on um, replication and, and uh, replacement of the areas that were disturbed. And Bob Gray is here um, as your consultant. Um, we did receive updated information on um, the Pacheco case. I think that tonight we're probably in a position where we can um, have you vote on something, hopefully, um, to accept the um, plan that they've submitted and also to hopefully um, agree on a bond number that can be um, move this forward. Okay. All right. Um, Bob, do you want to, is, is this an update on what, what Bob has? Is that what we're? Yeah, I, I, think, mean, I, th I think from the last time we've met is just what's happened since the last time we've met is really where we're going. 
Okay. I think what uh, I'd like to see happen tonight, I, I'm hopeful, uh, is that the plan uh, submitted by Brad Holmes, uh, which does have some uh, updated information that we asked for relative to the riverfront, uh, can be um, discussed and uh, hopefully um, accepted. Perhaps um, you want to make some changes to what he has suggested, um, but I want to remind uh, all the members that September is approaching quickly and um, we're hoping uh, really to implement the actual uh, revegetation in the um, end of September so that we uh, get that area planted and we have um, still a growing season in um, October and through uh, November. Um, there was also submitted with the revised plan, a management and restoration cost estimate. And I'm wondering if the commission had a chance to review that and um, what they might think of that as a figure to um, uh, ask a bond um, be submitted in that amount or whether you want to have some revision to that amount. Okay. Um, well, I think everybody's got a plan up in front of them now. And this was from Brad. Yes, and he may, he, he was planning to be on, so I don't know if you see him uh, listed in the uh, participants. I do, and he's on now. Okay. okay. Hi, Brad. Good evening, members of the commission. Brad Holmes here. Brad, Hi, Brad. thanks for being with us. Um, so I'm just taking a minute to look at this plan. Brad, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. So what we've done is we put together originally a restoration proposal and this revised restoration proposal includes the discussion that I had on site with Bob Gray and Amy on June 11th or so. And it's a step-by-step -step restoration proposal starting with the small area of salt marsh to the east of the image and then working into the uh, buffer zone and it includes management of the non-native invasive plants that are growing within the area which isn't a majority it's a minor amount of vegetation that's come in that's invasive which is a good thing and then it includes the management of the existing native vegetation that has regenerated in the area we have a, a large amount of poplar uh, saplings that are come into the area as a response to the uh, poplar tree that was removed or poplars that were removed. And it also includes revegetation with with uh, new saplings and shrubs to cover the area. Uh, all the species are listed in the document along the side of the, the page. But uh, I think it's a, a good proposal to bring the, the area back and introduce some more native species and some diversity to what was there. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you want to um, go a little further on that one? Yeah, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, one of the um, items that we had requested, um, which was not on a previous plan, was the uh, square footage of the riverfront and this revised plan uh, does have a notation in the left-hand corner um, and does reflect uh, 2,144 square feet uh, of restoration in the riverfront. Um, I thought that that was important because we've been 
hearing um, the presentation that this is a buffer zone uh, restoration. And while there is a salt marsh and there is a 50 foot uh, buffer to that salt marsh, and therefore there's a buffer zone to the salt marsh, 2,144 square feet of the restoration area is riverfront, which is a wetland resource area, not a buffer zone. I'm comfortable that the plan now reflects what was missing. Um, and I believe the commission can move forward in uh, further evaluating this plan to see if it, it uh, meets your uh, needs. I do want to point out, um, as you look at the plan that's on the, the, um, the screen right now, the area of the view shed um, is, is proposed to be revegetated with uh, shrub plantings, uh, not trees. Um, there was some comments in previous meetings from some several members um, that felt that that view shed should contain some trees. And you might wanna give that some consideration tonight before you um, accept this. Uh, the original order of conditions for that view shed uh, contained very carefully crafted language relative to the trees that were in the view shed. They were not to be <coughs> removed. They were to be um, pruned or limbed to allow for the view. Um, what you have here before you is a replacement of the vegetation that was cut but entirely based on shrub growth. Now, granted, uh, and Brad, I think, can attest to this uh, based on his onsite, most of the trees that were cut in that view shed do show some significant regrowth, but it's gonna take many years before um, you get trees out of the regrowth. Uh, so that's my only comment. I don't know whether you wanna consider um, requiring a few uh, of the uh, saplings that are proposed here to be in the view shed or whether you wanna just accept the plan as it's depicted. I just wanted to be sure everyone sees that the view shed is going to be revegetated based on this plan with just shrubs. Okay, thanks for that, Bob. Um, Amy, do you want to uh, comment? Um, yeah. I would like to say that um, I, I'm in agreement with Bob's um, review of of the plan and what in what he's noting, I, I also think that you should be able to come to hopefully a conclusion tonight on this plan. Um, well noted about the riverfront area in the twenty one forty four square feet of wetland resource area. Um, oh no, I'm looking at the estimate that they've come up with to to replace all this at thirty one thousand. So over 31,000 and um, thinking that that's a good good number to start, but you might want to make a uh, adjustment on that one. Uh, Bob, Frank, you want to add a comment? Me, yes, um, please. Just on the, on the cost estimate, um, it's, it's a, it, it calls for the two year monitoring um, and that's worked into that 31,000 estimate. Um, the only thing I would suggest that the commission considers is that the rate of inflation presently is around eight to 9%. Um, you might wanna apply um, an eight and a half percent uh, inflation to um, this figure 
uh, over the two year period, it, it'll probably change things about uh, $5,000, but that would, that would um, account for uh, increase in the cost of planting materials moving forward and uh, any increase in uh, services in terms of the consultant botanists um, providing the monitoring over those two year period. If you accept the 31,000 uh, here in 2022, it, it might not be enough to get us through the two year period is all I'm saying. I don't think it's, you need to increase it drastically, but inflation is inflation. It, they, they say it's gonna come down. Well, it may, it may not. Right, okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, Frank, the margin of error I would carry would be closer to 25%, like 1.25 is what I came up with, like 38, 780. Okay. Um, well, why don't we go around the commission members and let's, uh, well, Brad, if you want to comment now you. or you want to wait until we hear from commission members and comment on the whole thing, but. Um, I'll just, I'll keep it quickly then, um, just on the, the, the budget, I, I, just so you know, for discussion, I included uh, for years two and three, a 25% plant stock die off cost. Um, so I think that that's a good buffer in the sense that most restoration replication projects are required to have at least 75% plant survival. This project, as the budget is crafted, would have 100% plant survival. So meaning we're already covered with a, a buffer in those years two and three. So I, I, you know, we have a margin of error for a certain amount of plant die off and we're, we're crafted the project to maintain 100%. Okay. So just as consideration for the number. And then as far as plantings within that Vista window, we didn't want to get into an issue with working, uh, having trees become a problem in the Vista window, but we also are including the existing trees that are revegetated in that area to be managed through stump sprout maintenance throughout that whole general area. So there would be trees in that area. We're just not proposing additional new trees. Okay. Thank you. Um, All right, I'm going to start around. I guess I could just start with Richard if you're comfortable. If you have any um, questions or thoughts, I'm, I'm comfortable providing some thoughts. I think, um, based on what I've heard, re respecting totally what Brad built in for costs, I, I think I like Bob's idea of some uh, additional monies put aside for inflation. Um, I do like that. Maybe Amy's is a little higher than it needs to be, but I certainly think there ought to be some. In view of the trees, um, I understand and I read that the sprouts are going to come up and going to replace some of the trees. I guess I have a very cynical point of view right now, thinking that that would be so easy to keep them from growing very big and blocking the view. And uh, as I say, I'm being a little cynical, but I would prefer to see a tree or two in that middle vista that would be much harder to cut down again. That's my view for the moment. Thank you. Um, Penny? Yeah, my I, I'm with Rick, Richard. I'm not crazy about that being all shrubs because it wasn't before. Um, I, my other question is, there were trees on the side of where the shed or whatever they want to call that boathouse that were cut down. I mean, the whole place was cleared. Why aren't those trees being, they're in the 100 foot buffer. Why aren't those being replaced? Bob, can you want to speak to that? I mean, it's a th thought that I had as well. No, I, it's a thought that I, I had. I, I don't know why. I think, in, I think a um, earlier rendition of this plan did show some revegetation between um, the Pacheco property in Cavani, um, I don't remember whether it uh, included the same type of revegetation along the uh, other property line, it may have. Um, so maybe Brad would be best to um, indicate 
why he's no longer showing any uh, revegetation within that 100 foot buffer. Sure, so let's focus to the resource area so that we covered the salt marsh, the riverfront, and then the 50 foot buffer strip protected by the Conservation Commission's wetland regulations. I didn't go between the 50 and the 100 foot buffer zone for revegetation uh, with the thought that with a permit, the commission may allow uh, vegetation removal in that area. But um, you know, if that's something that we would need to look at along that property line, um, we could implement the same you know, proposal that we've included in, in green. But I, that's the purpose of the restoration plan. Okay, thank you. Anything else you wanna to add to that, Penny? Yeah, I. they took trees down, Brad, they were not given permission to between the 150, you know? And that, that just bothers me because it, <sighs> I would like personally to see some trees put back on either side where they were taken down on okay. the, um, in there. All right. Other than that, I'm fine. Okay. Um, Andy? Uh, nothing to add to it, Penny Richard. Okay, thank you, Brendan. Yeah, I also uh, agree with Penny and Richard, and uh, nothing really uh, to add after that. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience or, or uh, anybody else to speak to this? Anybody with a hand up anywhere? Seeing none, Frank. So I think I'm. I'm with Penny, um, I know I am. When we conditioned this project, we had a lot that was fully vegetated. The applicant came before us asking for permission to do vista pruning and to clear for the boathouse. And there was a lot of debate centered around that because we felt like that was part of a, a bigger, this project, was kind of piggybacked onto the house that was already done across the street. And we talked about stormwater. And then they came to us with a plan that we, we approved. And, and none of this was clear cut. There was vegetation on both sides, all the way back to the lane. Um, and we were, we, we approved this project um, based on that stipulation. So now, we have a partial, in, in my, my opinion, a partial restoration that, that planting should continue. I think it should go all the way back up to the lane, but our jurisdiction is at least to the 100. Um, but I, I would like to know what they plan to do beyond that. Um, and I, I still feel pretty strongly that this, it, it, if you stand there, with the house that was constructed, this now allows a, a full view area. And, um, you know, the idea was before that these were mature trees and they were gonna get limbed so that there could be a view area, but, but they would be, um, maintain a decent vegetation. And, and, and we worked with the applicant and their engineer for, for all that. And, um, you know, whether it's a mistake or, or, or whatever. Um, I, I don't see why this wouldn't have vegetation, including full trees. And I, I personally think there should be a couple of trees in that view area. There were before, they would have had to been pruned up so that, uh, um, and, and so they're gonna have to live with the consequences of letting those trees grow to a point where they can prune them. I just don't have any problem asking for or requiring them. And uh, I would like to get this moved along, um, but I'd like to see planting plan that, that was more, um, that was full for that site and, and not just that area. Um, and then, as far as the amount of money, I mean, we're looking at a year like this year. If this 
had been planted last year, Brad, how many of these trees would have survived a drought this, this year without the ability to water them? It wouldn't be good this year without watering, for sure. So I, I, I wouldn't be able to give you a number, but but, but everything's there's a struggling. Good, right. So there's a pretty good chance that a good chunk of this could have been lost if if that got planted last year and then they were trying to grow in this season. Um, and I'm just wondering if we've factored in enough money for this situation or if the applicant needs to have an alternative means of watering or you know whether they'd have to transport water or, or do a well, I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I'm not. I think we're close enough to his residence that we could have a, a uh, watering system. Oh. Okay, but that but th they weren't you know they were um, terminated with the with the water ban. So um, we we're all terminated. You know, I, I don't know. I just want to be sure that we have enough um, monies set aside to see this through, and that. You know, this may take several years. I don't know. I know that folks on here tonight weren't involved with with the Toll Brothers um, site, but you know they had to create a wetlands area, and we have a substantial bond that we're still holding and talking about now. Just reducing that bond once we see all that plant material um, be established, and and uh, curious to see what it looks like after all this uh, this dry weather. So um, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I don't know how long it would take to, to get a plan for the rest of this site. Frank, just a couple of, couple of items. Mm -hmm. One is, is that this, by accepting this restoration plan, you're not overriding the conditions of the order of conditions. Mm -hmm. And in the order, it was specifically called out that there were four cedar trees to be planted on the on the north side of the boathouse in that buffer between the 50 and the 100. Okay. Um, yeah, that doesn't account, Amy, for the ones they cut down. We didn't condition the removal of any of those trees. No, on the, none. Other than the, well, I shouldn't say that. We allowed for the clearing of for the boathouse of the trees for the boathouse. That's it. And then, as you say, we also asked for plantings, but then there was vegetation between the boathouse and uh, and the Kevney property that's been removed. Right. And so, if you look at the plan for the notice of intent, there's four trees, additional trees that we're going to go in. So maybe mm -hmm. you, you're looking for something in addition to that. So mm -hmm. that could be called out specifically, but I feel like you should be able to vote on this and make your intentions clear tonight. And then also coming back to your point about the drought and how would these numbers account for circumstances like that? That's where I go back to where I think you at least want to put a 10% buffer on the number that they've provided, especially since we're not going out there and verifying accuracy of the cost of the plants and so on. You're, you know, we didn't go out and get a second estimate to make sure that this is on, on point. So just, just to consider. Frank, Amy. Yes, uh, uh, Bob. The commission had a previous um, plan prepared by Brad that was uh, uh, had a revision date of May 12th and that one did show the northern uh, side of the boathouse uh, between the 50 and the 100 foot buffer uh, being replanted uh, and it included uh, some tree saplings. Yeah. Um, it did not include anything on the southern uh, side of the boathouse. Um, 
but you might want to clarify as to whether or not your intent is to have uh, tree revegetation on both sides of the proposed boathouse. Um, thanks, Bob. Brad, a question. When I, when I see this clearing area, um, so there's a, you know, the, the line that shows the area to be cleared for the boathouse. Um, I, I don't remember that area as being totally cleared out, but I, maybe that was part of the discussion. And then we asked for those cedar trees to go back, but there wasn't any planned clearing for, I would, maybe it's the east, south, uh, north, northeast side. Am I right? I think you're correct. I wasn't involved in the notice of intent process through the order, but the clearing limit is bubbled in on this plan surrounding the boathouse. Um, and okay. uh, and I don't have my old plan handy right now, but that sounds correct. I can certainly bring that um, same methodology up that uh, northern face of the boathouse so that it includes that clearing limit. Okay. And then some, as Amy pointed out, there was some cedars proposed on the on the southern along that southern property line. I, I can put the four cedars into that design there so it covers the order, which is already in place as a condition. So so that that little strip to me looks like it's maybe, I don't know, 20% of the area that you're proposing to revegetate, plus or minus a little bit. I, I'd say so. You know, you have that, it's almost like a little dog leg. This is still, there's a small strip of, of trees or plants between the 50 and the area that was proposed to clear out. And then there's that fairly wide strip, maybe 25 feet wide or something um, between the 50 and the 100 on the north. So if just trying to get a rough, Number so I mean I I think I'd be more comfortable with a with a figure of like fifty thousand dollars if we're going to include that area. Um, I don't know what anybody else thinks about. That. I agree with you. Me too. So. How do we hold that? As a performance bond. That's the, that's what we can get or, for this. Or 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 is a cash bond? Here's Adam Brodsky's on the call. I think he's going to make a suggestion. Okay. Can we unmute Adam? Adam, if you're a uh, good evening. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? We got it. Thank you. Hi, Hi Adam. Hello, Ms. Walkie. I'm sorry I came a little bit late. I was anticipating of this being reached later in the evening. I believe you're talking about a performance bond, which is candidly a problem here for a variety of reasons. One is the client can't get a performance bond for this scope of work. Um, typically, performance bonds and Mr. Chairman, you likely know this uh, better than I, uh, are available for construction projects. Uh, usually uh, they're dealt with in a commercial context, not a residential context, but you know, high-end residential, you can get performance bonds, but they're typically related to construction. Uh, the client has inquired about uh, getting a performance bond for wetlands restoration work, and there simply is not a program that's available for him to purchase a bond. And so it's simply not available to him. Um, in addition, he can't post up, and I think you were talking about $50,000, but um, we'll get to the, the value. Uh, he can't post a cash bond because he actually needs it to perform the work. And so the whole idea of a bond um, is uh, difficult as a practical matter. Uh, I've got a bit of a philosophic concerned because I've never seen a performance bond being posted for 
an enforcement matter. And your wetland regulations only talk about performance bonds to secure work under an order of conditions. Um, there's no reference to it with respect to enforcement. In fact, enforcement's a separate section of your regulations. So uh, from the client's perspective, it, it's, it's our hope that you know, we can agree upon a scope of work. He performs the work. If he fails to perform the work, uh, you've, got, uh, uh, you've always got your enforcement abilities. And he's got a pending order of conditions for a boathouse project, uh, which he's trying to desperately get started because he's fast losing the season. So the whole notion of a performance bond is, is really unworkable in this context. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. Money, yeah. I, I can, I know we've had to get bonds and as you point out, maybe it's more for construction or different phases. If we're cutting up a street or we're doing something in a municipality, we have to post bonds to be sure that that street can put be put back together or uh, we're working on someone else's property or, or, or whatever. I guess, Adam, not to be too blunt, but if this owner is ready to build a boathouse and wants to get going on that, that's not inexpensive either. And this is really a flagrant violation. In, in my mind, it's one of the, the more um, egregious ones that I've seen in the time that I've served on this commission. And to, to just allow this boathouse to be built and then say, well, you know, we're gonna do what we can for, for plantings. I, I'd rather say, you know what, we're not ready to allow anything to happen on that site until everything's planted out. Yeah. Mr. Me Chairman, I, I hear you. I, I, again, you, you likely know that there's a, a dispute between my client and the neighbor, but the commission has allowed the neighbor to continue with his project and he's subject to a near identical enforcement order. And that has not been a condition of the commission with respect to his project under, I'm led to believe, identical circumstances. No. So the client's got a concern that he's being singled out for disparate treatment here, whereby his neighbor who's subject to a near identical enforcement order is allowed to proceed with his project, um, but uh, my client's not allowed to proceed with his. Well, I, I, I take exception to that because we were asking the building department not to issue a CFC for your client's property until this got resolved. So he he actually got his certificate of compliance. He's in his home. The other uh, site is well aware that they have to get into compliance and we've had talks and negotiations with them. Um, you know, there was a offer made to try to do these together and I, I, I get the logistics of that. So it's not happening. So the commission is working with the other person and they don't have an occupancy permit and they may not get one until this is resolved. So, well, we're... and the, the reason that you likely know that my client was entitled to a COC is that under the state building code, the building commissioner has no legal ability to withhold a COC for a wetlands violation. So we're, we're just applying the regulations as they're written. So I, I know that the commission didn't like that, um, but that's sort of black letter law under the state building code. Uh, so I, again, I, I'm, I'm not looking to put the neighbor in, in, uh, in any difficult position here. Um, I'm just relaying to the commission, uh, at least my client's perception um, that the commission is coming down harder on him than on the neighbor. The real practical problem here is, is, is his inability. And again, I, I uh, when this issue first arose, I, I one, had never seen a performance bond for wetlands restoration work. And two, I suspected that it would be difficult for an individual property owner to try and get a performance bond. Um, because as you know, I mean, typically you have a construction company, you have a bonding line of credit, you apply for that bonding line of credit secured by the assets of the company. Um, and then depending upon the project, the construction project, then bonds are, are issued. And I've never seen an individual property owner be able to secure a 
performance bond. Well, well you I'm, know, what, this, this is sounding like it's getting more legal. And so maybe the real answer to this is that you and town council need to get together and, and we have a meeting on this and see what we can hammer out because I, I'm, I'm not going to let this go. No, um, I'm not going to let it go. And neither is the commission. So nope. may I make one comment, Frank? Sure. To Adam. Yes, Both neighbors had trees cut down. You're comparing a line of trees on the neighbors to a clear cut of a huge hunk of land. He was told not to clear cut. You're, there, it's, you cannot compare the two. And we are taking all the steps we can with the neighbor that he can't get in his house until he puts his trees back which are minimal compared to this site. That's all. And, and again, I, 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 I don't profess to know all of the details here. Um, I'm, I'm relaying the, the client's perception. Uh, that perception may not be accurate, but we're stuck with a problem whereby my client can't get a performance bond and doesn't have the financial resources to you know, give you $31,000 in cash while also doing this work. Again, I, I'm representing to you what I've been told here. I'm open to any other suggestions. Um, and, and of course, and, and I'm open to any other suggestions. I'm just trying to be creative here to uh, reach an endpoint because I know that this has been uh, dragging on for several months now. Because they haven't done that. Um, so my, my suggestion is this, that we get a plan that shows this vegetated to the 100 foot buffer, that we get an estimate for the material to the 100 foot buffer. And then Amy, we, we um, get permission from uh, town administrator to engage town council to, um, Iron it out. to, to sit with them, the client's attorney or whoever and, and work this through. Because I don't think we're going to work this out at a meeting, and we've got a bunch of additional hearings tonight. Anybody else want to add to that? Well, Frank, I I agree with you. I I think there's a little bit of an impasse. I personally don't see why the boathouse would come before the restoration. Um, nope. So, um, I think you've got the right idea. Thanks, Richard. Penny? Yes. No, I'm I'm all set. I I'm with you all the way. Andy. Yep, that, that plan sounds good. Brendan? I agree as well. Okay. Moving forward. All right. Okay. Can I continue the Wood Island? Amy, do we want anything else you want to bring into this? Tonight, do we have anything for the other site? Well, you wanted me to give you um, an update for the other site. Yes, please. So the well, so the update for the other site is that, um, well, that one left off where we are going to participate in a group meeting to try to iron out the details of uh, these these plans, and that couldn't come together because we were missing the accurate assessment of what was, um, you know, what was cut down on the Keeveny project. And so the attorney for Mr. Keeveny is trying to get a plan out of the engineer and we have not seen that plan yet. I have so, not heard and, from Mr. Keeveny's attorney and I'm not sure if he's on this call tonight actually. Okay. Um, we do. We still have Bob on here tonight. Bob, have you had any correspondence with their wetlands person or or, or anything? No. Um, it, it's been a little dis disconcerting that um, everything has gone um, quiet for the for the summer. Um, I think the last um, submittal from Mike Ball was actually his original submittal. And in fact, um, I believe Amy was waiting for a 
uh, revised engineered plan from Moss Engineering, which we thought we were going to get at some point in the summer, but it kept getting delayed. I don't know whether that has uh, resolved itself. Maybe Amy can comment on, on that. But last I saw, um, it had not reached the commission's hands. And um, Mike Ball, unless I missed something, has not um, updated any of the information from his original report. Okay. So Amy can- um... And that's concurred that there has been no update or no new plan. So submitted. Our, next, our next conservation meeting is September 12th? 7th. 7th. Oh yeah. Um, so that's one, two, two and a half weeks away. And if we got information for that meeting, how, how soon do we have to have it before the meeting? Is it five days? Well, Wait. for this enforcement, I mean, ideally five days, but I mean, we'll accept it. It, so why don't we it. send something out to the the um, the Kibneys and basically tell them if we don't have some information that we can get to Bob so that we can have Bob can if you got some information and we're able to to meet with us is this does the seventh work for you do you know that off the top of your head uh, the seventh yes I think it does. Um, let's see Wednesday. Wednesday night. Okay, I'll put it on the calendar right now. Well, here's my thought is that we should actually get information by the five days before the working days. It would be how about 831? Yep. If if we don't have information that's um, meaningful by 831, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at a cease and desist for that other property. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good, Frank. I'll send that right out. Okay. Sounds good. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Yep. And is there correspondence for uh, the one that we just talked about, Mr. Pacheco's case? that should be sent as well? Or are uh, well, we just gonna go straight to town council on that? I, I think we can go straight to town council. If they happen to come back with us and we can, if we got Bob back on on the, on the seventh and we have something that would preclude that, then we can discuss it. Okay, and uh, we have permission um, already actually for this, so. Okay. Good. All right. Adam and Brad, who wants to go first? Uh, I saw Brad first, so I'm gonna take Brad's okay. hand. Yeah. Did we lose Brad? He disappeared. I was trying, I, I muted myself. Can you hear me now? Thank you, yep. that. Great. I was just gonna be, keep it simple. Um, I can get the plan, I can coordinate with the team, get the plan revised and get that into the commission's office by 8.31. And um, hopefully uh, the commission and Bob can have a chance to look at the revised plan for what we just talked about for revisions. And I, my recommendation would be that we set a date to have the work done by uh, say, you know, October 15th, October 30th. And if the work isn't done, then the commission issues a, a an enforcement order or some other mechanism, um, but we could go around and around legally. I I think that uh, the simplest thing is just to get it done by put, set a date. But that was what I wanted to add for the commission. Okay, well I appreciate that. If you can give us a plan and a and an estimate, Brad, that would be helpful. And we are still going to have to figure out a way to be the commission to be assured that this gets done. Be and, and that the other project just doesn't start and move forward. And then 
we're chasing our tail. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Adam? And somebody thank you. And I also uh, muted myself. Thank you for unmuting me. Can you hear me? We yeah. got you. Oh, thank you. I, I just wanted to let the commission know that uh, I'm not available on the 7th, but that shouldn't slow things down. So if I don't appear, I just didn't want you to think that I was being disrespectful. Appreciate it. We'll uh, see what we can get to with that one. And, and then in the meantime, we'll, if anybody's got any other proposals, but Take it from yes, there. and I'll, I'll look for some creative solution to give the commission some assurance that this work will get done in a timely fashion and trying to figure out how to do that within the constraints that, that I have. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Seven o'clock, Frank, now. Okay, 19 Wood Island Road. Yeah, I make a motion we continue 19 Wood Island Road to September 26th. September 26th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we, we have a meeting on September 26th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got that written down in the wrong place. Okay. Because they all changed, right? Um, okay. I... I'm not going to do that. Okay. Somebody second that, please. I'll second that. As Brendan, all in favor? Richard? Yep. Andy? Yes. And Frank, yes. River Street. 113 River. This was continued. We have somebody from Ross Engineering. Uh, raise, rebuild, septic. See. Paul Maravito is on the line. Clear. Okay. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. Paul? Hi, can you hear me? We got you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, I submitted a... a um, uh, revised plan to the commission and what it shows is that we it shows the areas of the existing pavement uh, to be removed what we're proposing to do in the front of the uh, house on the street side is to retain the existing pavement from the property line of, uh, of uh, River Street up to the front line of the house to allow cars to park on a, a solid surface on the left and the right side uh, we show um, this isn't the revised plan. No, that's it's not revised. Plan. No, it isn't. No. You know the revised plan, Amy? They're looking. Mm -hmm. We're looking, but why don't you explain what you can while we're... Okay. What, what, what we're doing... Uh, basically is we're proposing to keep the pavement in the uh, front of the building from property line to property line which is where it is now the front from the front of the building to the rear of the property the pavement on the right side and the left side of the uh, house would be removed the left side of the house has, pay has pavement from the existing house all the way over to the neighbor's home but what we'll do is the saw cut in on the property line there it is on the left side of the house, we'll saw cut the pavement on the property line. And we're going, the proposal is to remove the existing pavement and install the proposed previous pavers from the front of the house to the stairway uh, coming down from the uh, rear portion of the open deck. On the right side, we're doing a, a similar change. We're removing the pavement from the front line of the house to the um, our rear portion of the existing home and replacing it with previous pavers from the uh, rear stairway out to the existing pavement that would remain in place in front of the house. There's also a, a, a detail 
on the left side of the plan showing the, the um, installation for the purview pavers. The other thing we added was on the interior of the house for the parking, proposing, we're proposing the previous pavers as well. We've used this application on a project um, at the end of Musquashka Pond a few years back. That's still in place and it's um, in good working order. I was on that site a few months ago to do some additional work and the pavers haven't settled and they actually look very nice. So we're proposing the same treatment on, on this site. Okay. So that's the extent of the revisions and be happy to answer any questions the members may have. And I'm gonna, I'm glad you can blow that up a little bit more, but I just, I wanna make sure members understand that not only are they asking to, they're asking to remove that asphalt from the front corner of the house along that property line to the deck, but then they're also proposing another 30 feet of pervious pavers, which are gonna extend all the way past the stairway. I think maybe you can see that now. I think Amy and Jen have expanded that plan a little mm. bit. So it's not just um, yeah, we're we're going past the stairs on the left. And the what, right what was what was there now, Paul? Um, all concrete. It's all pavement. Yeah, it's all concrete or pavement. Yeah, the uh, pavers would be at the bottom of the stairs, where there would be a landing, so they don't step off the stairs and uh, stand on soft sand. So the pavers would be from the stairs at the rear of the property out to the, the pavement in the front of the house. So I just, and again, I'm gonna get, so everybody has a chance, but when I look at this plan, you talk, your plan calls for the removal of 25 feet of um, bituminous concrete and replacing it with previous pavers, but then there's another 28 or 29 feet of mm -hmm. proposed previous pavers, but my question is, are you removing asphalt or concrete from that area now, or is that already just sand? No, um, if there's a hard surface here, that'd be re that would be removed and be replaced with the pavers. Is there any other hard surface, maybe Richard knows this, or, or Paul, on the between the house and the... Um... Give me a second, Rob, Frank. Uh, there's nothing on the ground. There's just decks. There's a small deck at the rear of the house that goes to the accessory structure. Okay. And are you proposing anything on the other property line, Paul? You mean the left or the right side? Well, I guess if I was facing the house Street. from River Street on the right side. There's... There's um, some pavement there now, right? That goes on the front of the proposed building to the to the rear of the. There's some uh, steps and landings mm -hmm. in front of the accessory structure. That's all coming out. That pavement, the pavement basically goes from to just about the property line. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just saw your note there now. Sorry. So you're proposing to do that on both on both sides of the house. Yes. Okay. Frank, the front of the house now is is uh, concrete. Okay. And then what happens under, under the house? Just, I, I want to make this clear to the members, and I, and I don't mean to jump away from this, but underneath, this new house is larger than the other house. So underneath the house, what's happening there, Paul? There's two things going to happen. There, there's a proposed... Um, slab uh, that's constructed out of previous favors for their cars. There's two vehicles that park underneath the house. Mm -hmm. And there's a reserve area for the septic system if they ever need it. The proposed septic system to replace the cesspools is under the rear portion of the house. Okay. All right. I, I didn't mean to step in, but I just wanted to be sure it was clear to clearer to others. Um, and uh, Richard, I wouldn't, you wouldn't mind going first again, just you're in that 
No, I, I mean, I appreciate the re revision. So the fact is that it's basically all concrete around it now. So anything is almost an improvement over what was proposed. Um, still think there's a lot of pavement, but the fact is it's there now. So I'm not sure we can absolutely require it to be gone. I'd like more of it to be gone. Previous pavers are an improvement. Okay, thank you. And Amy, did you want to comment? I'm sorry, before this or okay after the members? Um, Frank. Yes. Sorry, but I'm having major Zoom difficulties tonight. I'm glad you can see my screen. That's that's great. But <laughs> so so one of the things that um I just am questioning is this six inch aggregate base layer and uh, the detail. Can you see that? Yep. I mean, I feel like aggregate base layer is is a solid surface. I mean, no, it's a stone. <clears throat> it is stone. Well, there's two layers. So there's a six inch aggregate base, which is the bottom. And then yeah. there's a six inch drainage layer. So this is sort of consistent with what a lot of these pavered companies are asking for. But I think it needs to be clear on that aggregate base layer that that's gravel and not like you know, concrete, crushed, crushed concrete or crushed asphalt. That aggregate needs to be gravel. That's a spell that that that's in the specifications under 2.0, the materials that it has the um, sift size of the aggregate materials that that's gravel. That's primarily that's the, that's what we call a, a process gravel. OK. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess as, as long as pervious pavers are maintained and they perform as designed, meaning they actually do allow to, the drainage, I mean, I suppose it's okay, but it's still, it's not ideal. I mean, it's not a beach, right? This is a barrier beach, coastal dune, and we're trying to let the the landform move, shift, and migrate. That's the goal. So not sure this is that great of an idea. Getting the house up is definitely a good idea, though, for sure. All right. All right. Um, Penny? No, I'm OK. Anything's better than asphalt, in my estimation, the concrete. Um, any little bit that can filter on through, I'm happy. Because he did have it. It isn't as though we, if th this was a new build, I'd have it. We'll never have it. With it. Thank you. Thank you. Andy? Yeah, a couple of questions, I guess, related to those have been asked. I mean, I had the same question as you, Frank, and I don't know that we got the answer, but on the left side, if you're looking at the building, right, it says they were moving in that 26 feet, but it, the plan does not say there's anything being removed from that 28 feet. So have we confirmed, that, can we get confirmation that there is something there now, like concrete, or is that just new new paver area? I guess, Paul, Paul, that was, I guess, the question originally for you. I think Richard thought it was completely engulfed in asphalt. It certainly looks like it. I've been by it a few times, although it's been a little while, but I've got pictures of it too. And it looks like it's all um, concrete. all concrete around the house. Well, so I can, guess, that, can you confirm that? That's that? solid pavement from one house over to the neighbor's house at 111. What, what we'll do is a saw cut. We show we're going to, on the plan, we show the saw cut the pavement at the property line, and we're going to replace that with the previous pavers. There, there's two areas where the previous pavers are going. One area is in that 25.2 feet is, is to replace the existing uh, asphalt with the previous pavers. And then mm -hmm. we're going to install previous pavers beyond that out to the stairway coming off the back of the deck. But where, but so Andy's question was in mine earlier what exists well, in that location now? Doesn't know. That 25.2 feet is asphalt. 
And what's what and then, what's in the area the that's twenty eight? Yeah, the twenty eight point eight feet is is, is um just sand. Oh, yeah, the pavement right. doesn't go back that far. There's a there's a fence. To, you see the fence also that'll stay in place. That's actually on the abutters property. So the pavers will go right to the property line. Okay. Right. So I, I mean, we're we're really trying to limit the expansion of this these services. So I don't know that I love <laughs> the expansion of the of the pavers beyond the twenty five point two feet. Um, well, the reason one. they're there is so someone coming off that rear deck, Andy. Can, can walk to the front of the house and not be in the sand, you know, which is obviously soft. You know, it may be a hazard for the pedestrians. The other thing I'll point out, note nine indicates that there's, there's a, a reduction of the impervious area by two and a half percent, even given the a larger home on the site with a roof area. But we still have a reduction in the overall impervious area on the site. And that's occurred from the removal of the uh, of pavement shown on the plan. Yep. Yes, and I, I think there's two there's two issues. One is one is the impervious in the stormwater. One is the the resource area and the beach, right? And so, I mean, if we could come up, it, it looks like you could come up with a plan that didn't require the additional thirty feet of pavers. Like you could have the stairs go the other way. Um, I don't know. That's not my my call, but. Uh, it would be ideal not to expand the the hard surfaces. I think in this in this re, in this area, mm -hmm. uh, in my mind. And then, I mean, to Richard's point, a lot of it's concrete now, so, but under the house isn't. I don't know if we need to, you know, allow for the hard surface under the house. Um, this, this parking in front, but those are those are my thoughts. Um, okay. Um, Brendan, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree about those additional, the, the th additional 30 feet of pavers. I just wish we weren't expanding that. Um, although, uh, you know, it is good to have the reduction in, in the concrete or asphalt or whatever it is. But um, yeah, that like the, just don't want to add hard surfaces. So I guess that's my only thoughts really. Well, we don't have to condition it if that's a piece that you decide you don't want to have there. Um, do, do we have anybody? We covered all our members. Mm -hmm. um, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? Seeing none, Frank. Well, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm with the members that we're rest of the members that, you know, I realize you've got a site that's already got a house and there's already um, uh, sort of an impervious area here, but where that existing house is, the area of that existing house is now gonna be pervious pavers under the new house. And there's an area at the back of the house, although it's sand, is now under the proposed new home. I think with the amount of disturbance here and, and whatnot, if we're going to consider previous pavers to ex be expanded on that side, I'd rather see the whole site be changed from uh, existing concrete to impervious pavers. I mean, if, if, the, if the owners were willing to do an impervious surface, uh, like the, the impervious pavers on the whole site, then I think the, the commission could consider expanding that. And I'm speaking for myself, the proposed area going down the side that they just remove all the, all the asphalt or concrete, whatever it is, and then they would have pervious pavers under the house where they want to park, pervious pavers at the front of the house in, in lieu of paving, and then the proposed pervious pavers 
running to the back where they'd like to do that now. That would, to me, would be a, a reasonable exchange, but that's my own personal feeling. I can, can I make a suggestion? If we were to do that, if we were to put the pavers in the front of the house, we we're proposing to keep the asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, we could do that, but if we're going to do that, what I would ask is that we be allowed to have, say, a three foot wide a strip of pavers from the um, uh, bottom of the stairs uh, out to the front yard, yeah, out to the front portion of the property. Rather, you know, rather than do it from the house to the property line, just have a three foot strip for like a walkway. So people can walk on a more stable base when they come down off those stairs and walk toward the front of the house. I mean, that's for safety purposes more than anything else. Mm -hmm. They still be pervious pavers, for showing the detail, but I think that'd be a good compromise. Um, but does anybody else, I, I mean, I just tossed that one out there. So circle back again, Richard. I think it's a great idea and it's still gonna be even a little more of an improvement over what they had proposed. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, Frank. Well, an and idea. I wouldn't have a problem. I thought it was already pervious papers off the stairs, but if that's what he needs, that wouldn't bother me. Um, Penny? Thumbs up. Andy? Yeah, that works for me. Brendan? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, Amy, what's your thoughts? Sounds good. I wonder, Paul, can you get us something back? I mean, we could close this with the, with, but I want to make sure we're clear on what we're, we're actually doing. Um, so I don't know whether you want us to close or you want to continue one more time. Um, but we're talking about quite a bit of changes, and I'd want to see that on a plan. I can send you a plan this week um, showing the front part of the house, the post house, so the uh, pavement in the street to be uh, previous pavers, and then show you the three foot strip from the stairway out to the front part of the house as well. Okay. Amy, do you feel comfortable? Can we close this with that? And, and subject to getting that plan. Uh, yes, we can condition that. Yeah, we would condition it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to close with Richard. those stipulations of previous papers, basically the whole thing. Uh, that's a motion from Richard. Do I have a second? Second, Andy. Um, all in favor, Penny. You can just shake your head if you want. <laughs> she did shake her head. <laughs> and Brendan? Uh, yes. <laughs> what would you do without me to tease? Well, let's not find out. Yeah. Good uh, night. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Um, Thank you. 20 Man Hill Road. Um, yeah, can I make a motion to continue 20 Man Hill Road to September 26th? Take a second. 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 I, I guess that was Penny. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> all right, all in favor. Andy? Oh, I didn't know they were continuing. Yes. And Brendan? Yes. That's why Frank. I spoke up, Penny. And Frank, yeah. yes. Thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, three Seagate. Circle. Okay, so this is back to Paul Mirabito. And uh, we did receive the plan that's shown. Um, this is the new information that we've received since the last time we spoke about this. And it is a plan that shows shrubs around, um, around the house here. Frank, I, th I think uh, Bill Warnberg is on this as well. Okay. He may have, have a lot of that. 
Jenner, Amy, do you guys see him? There he is. Yep, I see him too. He's not on mute. There he is. Oh, I just saw him. There he, there is. he is. I see him. He's Hello. got his hand up. There he is. He's on. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Hi, Bill. Uh, Bill Arberger, uh, I'm here with Paul, obviously, and also Chris Goodman. And it's been uh, some time since uh, the last time we've been here. And as Paul said, we have the coastal salt tolerant uh, shrubs that are on here. Uh, one of the things that Chris has spent a considerable amount of time exploring is the proposal is to is to uh, have the house situated on uh, concrete piers versus pilings. And from his builder to his structural engineers, uh, the cost of his great preference is to have this on concrete piers. I do know that the property is, you know, is mapped as a barrier beach and coastal dune, but that seawall there basically obviates whatever things as I think Amy in the last hearing was saying to allow for uh, migrating, moving and shifting. It just doesn't happen anymore. Uh, what, in a nutshell, he's taking a, a property that's on the ground, uh, reducing the impervious surface and making this flood compliant, which are all great things in the FEMA zone, uh, particularly for him and his wife and his young family. And to move this, to move this, and they explored helical piling uh, piles and all kinds of other stuff. It just won't work in, in the cost considerations relating to this may make it such that they can't do the project. So I just wanted to get that out front because I knew that was a I knew that was an issue which we raised before and uh, very much like, you know, to allow us to put these pilings in for the simple for the simple reason is for all the reasons which I said, but to allow us to make this property flood compliant, uh, you know, the reduction in the impervious surface and uh, you know, all the good things in the seawall there, uh, there isn't going to be any migration shifting or moving of any materials anyhow. And I also know along that road, and I didn't want to get into, you know, detailing, because I also know in different situations, there's different, there's other different issues, but there are other, are other houses on there that have, uh, you know, concrete piers. So that in a nutshell, uh, but he did diligently examine and pursue with a builder and, and uh, structural engineers, and we really couldn't come up with anything other than to, because this would necessitate, and I know most of you know this, they actually, instead of, instead of lifting the house, you actually have to move the house uh, to another location uh, and all of that. You know, Frank, you'd probably know that, what the procedure is better than anyone. But in a nutshell, you know, that's for, for right now uh, where we are and very much be desirous if the commission, you know, could, uh, in other words, approve the project as, uh, as presented with the new plantings as mitigation and, and whatnot. Amy, do you want to weigh in on this first? Um, well, I mean, I could re-say what I said in April, if, if you if you need me to, but um, as far as the new information goes, I mean, I, I do agree with Bill that we should be able to close this tonight um, as an elevation. I mean, it the should be compliant with state building code construction requirements for coastal wetland resource areas, um, barrier beach, coastal dune, flood zone. So you know, if we condition it as such, I think that we are good. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that this planting plan necessarily addresses what we had as remaining concerns at, at the end of um, our discussion in April, um, but certainly the type of, the, the way you're gonna elevate the house was, was part of the discussion. Um, and, and one thing also of note is there is, 
Phil, there's there's quite a lot of money out there, and and also Mr. Mr. Goodman, um, to help people and homeowners elevate their homes. Um, in fact, the, the town is is holding a workshop with MEMA um, on the 30th. Uh, if he's, he might be interested in attending that. Is that September 30th, maybe? August. August 30th. Do you know where they're doing that? Library. Or, I, I would check the website to make sure they're not changing it because actually I believe that there's a pretty, um, you know, there's a good interest. So I'm not sure they might, if whether or not they're going to move the room, but that's where it was posted to be located. Okay. So your comment on the plantings, I, I guess, and, and well, why don't we start to run through members and see. But uh, Penny? Yeah, um, so it's it's two things. It's it's plantings and, and how the how property or the structure is right. supported. No, I think the plantings very nice. I if a house is sitting on the beach proper, then I kind of think that that rule of the wooden pilings, driven piling. But this isn't on the beach. I really don't have a problem with piers, but that's just me personally. Um, it's not sitting on the beach. And I just don't have a problem to put piers in there. But the rest of the board, that's my two cents, Frank. Okay, thank you. Um, Andy? And it's been a long time since we've seen this, so if you got questions. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I have questions. I, I think, you know, appreciate the, the presentation and, and the stickiness of the situation. I, um, but I think to Amy's point, you know, we have, we have to uphold the regulations. So I'm okay as long as we're upholding the regulations for these resource areas. Okay. Um, Brendan? Yeah, I, I agree with Andy and I, I don't have a lot more to add to that. I just um, do want to uphold the regulations and- okay. uh, um, Richard, sorry. No, that's it, I'm all done. Okay. Um, Richard? Well, this is where we have divergent opinions. I'm on Penny, I'm with Penny on this. I think that sometimes the one size fits all just doesn't work away from the beach and there are numerous exceptions in various parts of town to that. Yeah. Um, and I, I have to agree with what Bill said behind a wall and then off the beach. Um, I just think that um, um, it, it could be accepted, but I do understand the regulations are the regulations too, but honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to the peers. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? Seeing none, Frank. So first off, with regard to the plantings, was the idea that these plantings would be used as ornamental around the addition, or were we thinking that these plantings were more to be used along the edge of the... Um, or originally, what the way it was left was to enhance the buffer. Right. So... I mean, that's if I were to see plantings um, to enhance the buffer, I would have expected I would have expected these to be planted um, more between the property and the marsh um, or the edge ed of the pond. Is my own oh. thinking. I mean, it's nice to have them anywhere, but. Um, the, the way it looks like they're proposed, they're more in a plant bed around the addition um, and deck, which which might work out fine. Uh, it's just not where I anticipated seeing them. I guess I've forgotten where we asked for them. I'm sorry. But I don't really, it's been so long, I really don't remember. Um, and if there's a, 
you know, if, if these function in that location, that's fine with me. I think it's the removal of a tree. Is, is that right? Is that part of this? Yes. So we, there's a, a tree to be taken. Plant. Yeah, I got it. So yeah, there's a there's a ornamental shrub there, small tree that would come out. Yeah. It's, So I don't know whether the rest of the commission members are, are fine with the way that's um, designed or again, we could always ask that it be shifted depending on how you feel. The, the part about the foundation, I'm, I'm, I'm good with as long as the foundation's in compliance and we go back and forth on these where some people don't have the ability to move the house <clears throat> because of constraints with neighbors and whatnot. And then those times we allow for concrete, a concrete foundation. And then as Mr. Orenberger, Johnny Orenberger pointed out, in this case, it, it does bear extra costs. Not only does the house have to be elevated, but then the house ha has to be shifted. And this isn't exactly an easy one. Maybe it would go forward so that they could then drive peers not only for the house, but for the addition. What they can do with an existing house is lift it up and then you can excavate and pour under the house. One of the things that should happen if they do that is there should be some kind of borings to be sure that a poured foundation is the right foundation for that location. Um, you know, you can imagine that the squash get pond could have been larger at some point. We've seen the, um, the cobble dune keep shifting it, you know, landward. And, you know, marsh and whatnot keeps, continues to get covered up. We also know that Seagate Circle was, was pretty much a filled piece of property. It's not very natural looking. So I think it's important that um, that the building department concur with this foundation. If the building department feels that this is code compliant and that's the best solution for the, for the owner, certainly elevating that house is a good idea. Um, but I think there's a couple of pieces that need to be checked just to be sure mm -hmm. that's, that's correct. I think that's something we just put in into the orders and, and then they can work that out with the with the building department rather than keep tying this up. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 I go ahead, Penny. I just have to go back to the shrubs. For some reason, I thought the shrubs were going back with the shed. I finally found the shed. And that was kind of my understanding, but. Well, why don't we, can, why don't we condition it that we'll, we'll come up with an acceptable plan that we, we agree in principle okay. that there should be plantings and let's come up with a acceptable plan for the commission. Bill was raising his hand. Maybe he has the answer. Yeah, yeah, Bill. What, yeah what Chris Goodman told me is previously they, any any uh, plantings they've had down closer to there, they've uh, all died on a couple of times, and that's why they located them where they are. He does some flexibility, you know, if you, if you want it, uh, you know, a little different location. But once you once you get further down in there, he's already had on a on a, a few occasions uh, that things have died. That's the reason why they position them the way they did. That it gets flooded too much in the back. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, like I said, we can we can condition both those things and 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 work something out. So not too worried about that. Okay. Take a motion. I'm ready. Can I take a, get a motion? I make a motion to close, and the conditions will state that. Um, we got to look at the a little looking at the plantings and to go to the building department about putting in the piers instead of pilings. 
Well, well, so it's going to be a condition that's going to be elevate in compliance with state building code. So that says the same thing. All right, Frank. Yep. Sounds good, Amy. So that's a motion from Penny. Do I have a second? Second, Andy. Thank you, Andy. All in favor, Richard? Richard. <laughs> he's, he's shaking his head. And, Bre <laughs> and, and Brendan? Yes. A lot of technical difficulties here tonight. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Paul. Um, 184 Redwood Foster Road. Oh. And who's uh, Paul? I'm here. Pardon Frank. me. I'm here. Wait, wait, well, hold on well. a sec. I... Sorry, we've been doing so many. Um... Um... Conditions. I didn't read an opening for this one. Um, Bear with me for a second. Jen, I was looking in the wrong pile. I got it. So on August 22nd, 2021, 6 p.m., the Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citrus Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Joseph Harold work related to constructing a single family dwelling pool and landscaping at location 184 Edward Foster Road, situate abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting will be available on the agenda posted on the town website. Um, before we start that, I just want to make a disclosure. I, I filed with the Board of Selectmen through the um, Ethics Commission that um, I had done a lot of work on this property prior to the ownership of Mr. Harold, um, the previous owner. Um, not that that would make any big deal. I have done a small amount of work for Mr. Harold in the past. Um, I'm not involved in the construction of this project. And um, I did submit that disclosure to um, the town clerk and the board of selectmen. Okay. Okay, you're good, Frank. All right, well, I just want to make sure we're Yeah, clear. no. Um, so Get it out, st yeah. start with the um, applicant, Paul, is that you? And Bill Armberger is his hand up as well. Maybe Bill wants to open. Oh. Yeah, Bill Armberger, just by way of introduction, I'm gonna turn this over to Paul. Uh, I'm here tonight with Joe and uh, Katie Harold, along with Paul Marabito. Also, Mike Koto of Sudbury uh, Design Group is here. He's our landscape architect who's very familiar with the property. When I say, ironically, the prior owners, the Michauds, over 30 years ago, he did all the work for the pool, hardscape, landscaping going back uh, over the years. Uh, one of the things which and I'm going to let Paul explain the project a little. We understand that this will be uh, continued to another meeting and perhaps the commission is going to have a consulting engineer look at it. But why don't I have Paul look at this? Because one of the things relating to, uh, you know, is stormwater. And this is subject uh, to coastal storm flowage. But let me, Paul, let me turn this over to you and then uh, I'll okay. speak after that. All right. Thank you. Um, the plan on the screen is 
there, there, there's two plans I'd like to look at. One is the notice of intent plan. That shows um, the existing site that's subject of the that's the subject of the notice of intent. It's lot A. It contains 61,000 square feet of land. Um, to the north of that, there's a lot B, which is a separate parcel owned by the applicant. That is not part of this application. But on lot A, what it shows is um, it um, it uh, shows the existing dwelling. There was a pool, a patio. Um, there was a, a garage. Also, that's all been raised. Um, mm -hmm. What this, this plan also shows the uh, top of a, a stormwater a revetment, which is a coastal engineered structure. According to the DEP, that does not hit, um, uh, constitute as the uh, top of a coastal bank. Um, so we don't show any buffer zone to that. But um, going through the existing pool area, you'll you'll see the uh, 15 foot contour. That's the um, firm flood zone. On the ocean side of that 15 foot contour is zone AE, which is uh, land subject for coastal storm flowage for which there are no performance standards. Everything on the other side of that line is in firm zone X. Um, the applicant did go to the historic commission and he received approval to uh, demolish the house. The permits were properly obtained and um, the a house uh, and the garage were raised accordingly in accordance with that permit. Um, all of the work for that, uh, for the demolition was done above the 15 foot contour because that, that, again, that was in zone X. Um, there's another plan we filed, if we can show that, that would show the uh, proposed foundation for the proposed home. This is a notice of intent plan, but what it shows is the proposed home and the pool, which would be on the water side of it. Um, again, the work for that pool is primarily in uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage. But there's another plan, if you could put that up, I submitted, it shows the foundation plan. I, I'd like to talk about that briefly. Yeah, one at a time, yep. Yeah. Okay. Foundation. Huh? That's that's hold on. It's coming. Okay. Okay. What 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 this plan shows is the proposed foundation only. Um, again, it shows the uh, demarcation of the firm zones, zone A E fifteen and zone X. Um, I'd say more than half of that foundation, the proposed foundation is in zone X and the remainder being in zone AE15. Um, what we wanted to talk uh, this evening about was um, whether or not the commission would be agreeable to let the applicant um, start work on the foundation only, and at the same time proceed further with the stormwater work and anything else uh, related um, and the uh, notice of intent application. Uh, uh, the, the reason the applicant wants to start the foundation now is uh, one is the uh, favorable weather. Um, the work on that foundation is going to take probably uh, two or three months um, to complete it. Um, once the foundation is completed, that site would be fully stabilized. Um, and in the meantime, we could proceed with any other further review under the stormwater uh, by law, which would be a separate application. It's a, that's separate from the notice of intent. There, there's other reasons for uh, working on the foundation now. Um, one, one that that's probably the major portion of the site work, and it'd be helpful to do that prior to any unfavorable weather, which would probably occur in the winter months. Um, it also gives us time to adequately address the stormwater issues. 
and the, it would address the, some of the abutters concerns that the work starts sooner than later to avoid the winter or weather conditions. Um, the, the, the land, the contours show that the land slopes from the proposed house down to the upper part of the lot. If we can scroll down a little bit, what I want to show is the existing, no, the other way. The other way. Scroll up. No. Yeah. In the upper left hand pitch, um, portion of the picture, you'll see a drain manhole and there's a catch basin. The existing catch basin uh, drains this whole uh, lawn area, which you're probably uh, somewhat familiar with. From that catch basin is a pipe that goes out into one of the catch basins at the end of Edward Foster Road. This, the grading on this lot um, would essentially stay the same in that the drainage pattern would, would stay the same. By that, I mean the water would still continue to flow to that on-site catch basin and go out into the a basin on Edward Foster Road. From there, the water goes out into the harbor, which is a, a tidal waterway. On the upper portion um, of the plan, just above the existing shed, there's a stone wall. And we show the elevations on that. The elevation of the wall is anywhere from 12.1 to 13.5, which is about um, two to three feet above the uh, lawn area, which is below it. Again, that, that um, existing lawn area acts as a uh, natural stormwater basin where the water would uh, collect after storms. And it eventually seeps into the catch basin and then it goes out into the harbor via the catch basin and Edward Foster Road. We, we didn't file anything for stormwater at this point because that catch basin acts as a natural drain out to the harbor, which is tidal water. Um, the stormwater bylaw requires that if there's an increase in the volume of water coming off a of site, that it either be uh, recharged on site, or, or in this case, it could be uh, directed to a, a tidal water, which is the plan that we would propose. The only other option under the stormwater bylaw is to recharge the increase in volume of water on site. What that would require is probably and we, and we haven't done the calcs, but uh, knowing the groundwater is probably high in that lawn, we'd probably be three to five feet above that lawn area, um, with, with, which would require thousands of cubic yards of fill. Uh -huh. And the purpose of that would be to recharge the, in, the increase in volume on site, which gets into the groundwater, which would eventually go out in the harbor. That's exactly what's happening now with that lawn area. The water, uh, some of it seeps into the lawn area and it goes into the subsurface of the subsurface uh, soils and it, um, and it would eventually find its way into the harbor on the ground. And some of it goes out through the catch basin. Um, our proposal for mitigation would be, uh, our, our preference would be to uh, keep the lawn area where it is and in its place, um, uh, treat the water by in installing what they call a storm scepter. What we do is to switch the catch basin on site out with a new storm scepter and we put a second one in that last catch basin on Edward Foster Road, which would also clean up the runoff coming off of the pavement on Edward Foster Road. Um, we, we feel that's a much better solution because we feel it's much more envir environmentally uh, sensitive to the, um, not, not only the lot, but the neighborhood in general, plus it, it also adds a benefit where the a runoff from the street would, would be treated prior to going into the tidal water, which is the harbor. Um, in, in order to do that, we would need the vote of the commission to allow us to um, allow the increase in volume of water to go directly into the tidal water, which you can do. And you have done at least one other um, occasion that I'm aware of on a previous project that we did off of Border Street. Um, again, there, there's two solutions to the stormwater, either bring in all that fill I mentioned and accomplish the same goal or uh, treat the water uh, uh, on site and also uh, treat the water coming off the street uh, prior to going into the ocean you know, th uh, th through the harbor. Um, but again, our, our main goal would be for the reasons I pointed out would be to 
have the commission allow the applicant to start work on the foundation and then uh, continue on with a stormwater permit and anything else that would need to be reviewed under the notice of intent application. Um, I think with that, I'll end and, and um, ask Bill to chime in if he has any additional comments. Okay. Uh, if I could, just uh, a couple things from Paul, just to give you the exact provisions. Uh, under the stormwater regulations on the section 9.2, it says that the stormwater authority, which is the commission, uh, when we're dealing with land subject to, to coastal storm flowage, uh, can have a vote uh, to waive the requirement that post-development uh, peak discharge uh, not be over pre-development peak discharge. For all the reasons Paul said, uh, in, the, in the interest of not putting a lot of fill in there, which we could achieve it by doing this, but we're gonna obviously, we want the commission's thoughts on this. I think putting these two storm scepters in this not only uh, cleans the water further from our site, which in the absence of that, it's gonna infiltrate into the harbor anyhow. But more importantly, it's also gonna, with the second storm scepter, is going to uh, clean the water coming down Edward Foster Road from other properties, which doesn't exist now. So we think that that's a better utilization of funds and also, uh, and also to prevent bringing in unnecessary fill onto a site. But but from the commission's standpoint, and whatever the commission decides on that, she gives the guidance, then we're gonna proceed in that manner. But we don't want to, uh, as Paul, Paul designed design the storm scepters, if that's the direction we're going, and that, that's our preference, our landscape architect's preference, and everyone, at least from our side, feels that that's a better utilization and, uh, and the way to address uh, you know, that's a good uh, stormwater system, the existing system and, and improving it with the two storm scepters. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, Amy? Uh, I'm not sure what you want me to say here. I mean, it's kind of a little bit unconventional request that they've got about, <laughs> I mean, normally a project like this is a big project, right? So we would review the project in its entirety with respect to the applicable regulations and bylaws, which in this case is the Wetlands Protection Act and the uh, Situate Wetland Bylaw and the Situate Stormwater Bylaw. Um, we would confirm the accuracy of the resource areas as presented so um, this case, like all these cases of coastal resource areas, you're looking at the land form. Um, you're not looking at the engineered structure of top of coastal bank. So I guess I would question uh, presence of coastal bank on the property um, and just make sure that, that those are accurate. Um, not sure if the engineer evaluated the site in accordance with the DEP Coastal Bank policy or not. Um, it's not on the plan. Um, let's see. I don't know, with respect to like starting the project, it, the, I guess that the, the plan is already not accurate in the fact that the existing conditions plan is are, are not reflective of what you will see when you go out there since the house is gone. Um, you'll just see a, a hole in the ground at this point and some remaining wall. But I, I definitely would would recommend that the commission get out there and, and take a look at the site and um, look forward to, to reviewing stormwater and um, can get, get on that as, as soon as we receive the submittal for sure. Okay. Um. I guess we'll, we'll get started with members. It is a little, as Andy said, it's unconventional. And I just hope everyone understands, at least um, maybe I make it a little bit clearer, but the applicant knows that there's, there's so much more to review on this. 
with the stormwater piece. Amy and I had a chance to view the site together. Um, and and there's legitimate concerns with the size of the uh, of the site and the changes on that piece of property. Um, so that we have a hearing that there's a lot lot more to come with regard to the stormwater um, piece and and the overall project. Um, so I think commission members should ask about the overall project as well as weighing in on the request to to start a foundation um, before uh, we've closed the hearing here. So um, I guess this time, Bill, do you want to? Yeah, ju just to clarify before the members start. Uh, well, and I thought I said in the outset, maybe I wasn't clear enough. We understand that there's going to be further extensive review in this and the, and the town is going to have their own consulting engineer. But the size of the project, I will not lose sight of the fact, is that if you look at this, you know, 70% of the foundation area and backwards isn't even jurisdictional. And we'll get into all the, make sure the resource areas, all the state, local regulations are addressed. And it, it is a little unconventional, but for good purpose. The, the good purpose being, if the commission says to us, we would like storm scepters in here, then we can do that. We think that's a better utilization, but we're not, we, we've already explained what the issue is. We can do one or the other, and we're just looking for guidance. So that's number one. So I don't think that's unconventional when we're trying to figure the best way to do this, number one. Uh, number two, uh, as far as getting uh, the foundation approved, uh, getting the foundation approved, and obviously it's subject to the, it's subject to us satisfying uh, the, uh, that, you know, the order of conditions and everything else. That allows stabilization is the key issue. And the key issue, even the distinct for that, is to be frank with you, we may lose our builder. And, you know, if we're doing this in the month of January, uh, you know, the possibility with storms and other things that we might not be able to stabilize this as well. And so that's the reason for this. We're not asking to do this outside of the outside of the box. We just think that this, that's a very prudent way from a land use aspect to approach this, that's all. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, just trying to see who, uh, Penny, why don't you go ahead? Okay, here's, here's my first question, because um, I don't, I personally want, would hate to see Phil brought, brought in on this property. I'd like to see the land stay this way it is. My question, first question is, what's the square footage of the new house and the old house? What's the difference or are they the same? I mean, I believe the old house was 43 or 45,000 square feet, 4,500 4, square feet. What's the square footage of the new house? I'm just curious. Mr. Marabito. Is that his? Yeah, where did you get? I'm not sure what that I'm is, Benny. Window, but yes. You know what they need it back. Yeah, and you can maybe bring up the conceptual drawing. Maybe that has that on it, that colored well, one. In the uh, actually, if I'm looking at the the NOI plan in the top corner where it says impervious area calcs, it says existing structure is four thousand one hundred sixteen, and the proposed is six thousand one hundred sixty-five. So it's about two thousand square feet larger. Okay. Um, Here's my question though, Frank, is that the house or the house in the garage where this garage is attached, the old garage is detached? Well, if, if you wanna take, if you wanna do it by, to I mean, this, there's a whole bunch of different factors yeah. like this walkways in the new house yeah. that have 1300, I don't see walkways, but I do see a driveway and it's just different ways to calculate this whole thing. But if you take the total calculations, the existing was 
a little over 10,000 and the new one is a little less than 17,000. Okay. So it's an increase of about 7,000. Okay. I don't know what to say. I mean, I personally don't, don't like to see a big hole out there for the fall and winter. Um, I don't know if they get the foundation in and we, I, I mean, the issue is stormwater, I do believe. The big stepping stone. So I'm just not, I guess I need somebody like you, Frank, or to tell, tell me what is the best thing to do. Yes, it is unconventional. We haven't done this before. I originally thought the whole I saw, saw out there was from the old foundation. Now I realize, no, that's all been filled in. This is a new hole. Um, but I really don't want to see that hole stay like that. Okay. But somebody else, I, I just sure. don't, don't know what's the right thing to do. But I really don't want Phil. I would love the um to to fix the catch base. Mike, we plant, we plant uh, winter rye or something after the foundations and do some stabilization. Okay, um, Frank, Frank, can can I uh, quickly respond to? Okay, sure. Some right. um, um, you're correct. The the plan shows. Um, about 2,000 square feet of, of an increase in the structures. That, that, that's everything that's proposed for the impervious area. Okay. Uh, so we're talking 6,100 square feet versus 4,100 square feet, which was the size of, of the uh, structures that were there prior to demolition. Um, and as far as the stormwater goes, we are uh, willing to provide that uh, mitigation but again, the, if, if I'm going to do that, I, I need to know which direction I go. Do, do I do a design uh, using all the fill or do I do a design where we install the storm scepters and let the increase in volume go out into the tidal water after it's been treated both on site and in the street? Okay. Well, I think the advice for some of that um, Honestly, Paul would come from once the commission had had a consultant to take a look at it. So I'm not sure that we can give you a total answer on that one. Um, I, I think that would be something that would be worked back and forth. But I think we should continue the discussion. Um, I'd yeah. kind of like to keep moving to some members. Um, and then maybe we can answer some of those. We've still got a lot of hearings tonight. So let's, let's go through Andy and, and Brendan and then... Um, see if we have anybody in the audience, I guess. All right. Um, Andy? Sure. Um, I guess, yeah, my thoughts are, have been somewhat touched on, I guess. I, I like the idea of doing this without Phil, if, if we can, you know, if that, if that works. Uh, but Frank, to your point, and somewhat to Penny's, you know, I, I'm not feeling particularly confident without some expert advice from, from the review. So uh, I, I feel somewhat like we should have this proceed you know, as, as it normally would with, with some review and then the commission having that advice to be able to make a judgment on it. Okay, um, Brendan. They keep saying the same thing. I agree with Andy. I, I, um, Yeah, I, I, that's about it. Okay. Um, is there anybody, do we have anybody? Oh, Richard. In the, oh, Richard, I'm sorry. That's all right. I got nothing to add. I, I agree with the uh, Andy and uh, Brendan. Okay. <laughs> um, I, Bill, I, I would want to go to see if we get anybody. Um, <coughs> Anybody in the audience with questions or um, so it looks like we have a, a Kelly Driscoll. 
there's somebody else as well, but we'll start there, maybe. Hi, yes, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Driscoll. My husband and I live in the neighborhood at 149 Edward Foster Road. And we've had a chance to look at the Herald's plan. And from our perspective, it's clear that they were very thoughtful in their uh, approach, particularly when you look at um, environmentally. And we fully support the overall site improvements. I think, you know, we certainly would love to see something happen before the winter and, you know, make sure the, uh, the drainage is addressed. I think they've taken a lot of time and been thoughtful about how they've addressed it. So just, I wanted to let, let you know, we fully support it from an overall site, the site improvements and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. And then we have a Michael Brodigan. Yes, thank you. Um, Michael Brodigan, 17 Circuit Ave. Uh, I would also like to go on record in support of the Harold's application. I've had an opportunity to see their plans. Um, I know Joe and Katie uh, have given a lot of time and a lot of thought and careful consideration, not only to their project, but how it impacts the, the entire neighborhood. Feel confident that um, that they would uh, be stand ready to address anything that, that may pop up, should it pop up. But I agree with, uh, with Kelly's point that it would be nice to see this hole um, filled and the foundation put in prior to the, the winter months coming around. So I'd like to go on record in full support of this application and uh, the full support of, of the foundation work commencing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Bill? Do you want to come back? At Yeah, Frank. What I was uh, the the point I was got the point I was going to make, or for the commission, I'm, I meant for them to consider, uh, was what I'm hearing from the commission is, and again, we're not asking you to sign off on storm scepters without without your engineer's advice. But it sounds to me the consensus is if we can do this without Phil, we'd like to do it without Phil. If that is the consensus. We'll move forward and design it in that way, understanding that if it if it doesn't meet muster of your consulting engineer, then we'll do it differently. But I think it, it sounds pretty pretty consistently. If we can do this without Phil, we'd like to do it without Phil. So that's number one. Number two, I just spoke with Mike Koto, and if uh, very much like to just do the foundation, and he said that. As soon as we get that done, he can stabilize this with, and I don't want to, you know, he's speaking, you know, whether it's winter rye or whatever it is immediately to get something so we don't have, you know, the situation, you know, possible storm situation. So I just want to give those two pieces of information to the commission. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Now, it looks like we have another hand up. And when you come on, please state your name and address, please. Lance Offen, 29 Circuit Avenue. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I fully support uh, what Joe and Katie are trying to do here. Uh, and I'm really confident that anything that they build will be so far above standard and above code, um, it will be excellent quality. And I've lived here for um, over 14 years now. And I'd just like to tell the um, committee that Anytime there's been a storm on the, for, on the former uh, Michaud property, uh, the water has never come more than um, halfway up uh, that lawn that you all are talking about. Um, and it's my understanding that uh, virtually all of the house uh, will be built above the floodplain. I really support what they're trying to do. Thank you very much. Thanks for your input, 
Shit. Okay. Um, Your turn, Frank. So I've had a lot of discussion about this project. As I mentioned, Amy and I went to look at the site. Um, I've been talking to Mr. Maravito, heard from Mr. Ormberger, and I've talked to the owners directly. Um, you know, typically, we have a hearing where we would have a whole site in front of us, the, the whole project, which you have in the notice um, of intent plan. And, and we would go through a process of having uh, a consultant look at this. If we determine that it requires stormwater, that those pieces re be reviewed. And there's also, as Amy pointed out, the issue of, of properly identifying all the resource areas um, and delineation. We have most of that information on the plan and we do have um, projects around that area that we've already conditioned. Um, and I do think we have a ways to go in get, gathering that information. We still have that process, uh, which has to go forward. What we do have is a, a site that was pre-existing with a house on it. This isn't a brand new site. There was a home with substantial landscaping and a pool. And um, the, the applicant has our, got a permit to demolish that um, home and the uh, and the pool, and they went through the process of doing all the, the pieces that the building department required. So now they've they've demolished all that, and they have this cleared site that's disturbed. And so the question is, would we be? We still have to go through the whole this whole stormwater piece, and we have to determine um, what's the right process for drainage um is it the storm septas or, or or is there something else on the property so we have a ways to go my personal feeling is the storm septas would be a better choice than filling more of that lot and diverting the water elsewhere but that's that's a first brush at that um but i think we could i think the commission could give that direction to the applicant um this evening that if, if there's an alternative between one and the other, we'd prefer to see that. Plus storm scepters would go a long way, um, not only for the discharge of this property, but I believe for mitigation, the, the applicant's willing to do a storm scepter for town drainage as well, which doesn't exist now. So there's some pluses there, but I think that's putting the cart before the horse a little bit. Um, we do need to get these other resource areas delineated. Um, so there's sort of a twofold thing. The second piece is the request to get started on a foundation. Um, I guess from a contractor standpoint, having worked in that location and um, the, the weather is, is, can be hugely difficult at best. Um, it's a fairly complicated home with a lot, a lot of work. So allowing the applicant to get started on the foundation before this, um, I think that the commission would be signing off solely on a foundation and not on the rest of the project in this foundation for the house, not the pool or the patio or, or anything like that. And I think the applicant needs to understand that um, that pool and patio would still be subject to the approval by the commission once it's been reviewed by the consultant. So um, I think it needs to be made clear that um, those some things could possibly um, come to question at the time that, that that's being reviewed. So um, they're at a little bit of a peril that the commission's not accepting their whole plan, but they're accepting a foundation plan. Um, I think that that needs to be clear if we're going to allow them to do the foundation. Um, and then do we feel that that's a benefit um, for both the commission or the town and, and the applicant? And, and I guess given that the area is already disturbed and knowing that if this isn't started relatively soon, it probably means that it wouldn't start until the spring um, I know that there's been a lot of construction on the cliff 
it's still going on a house like this could probably be um, a year and a half or two to construct so if this doesn't start relatively soon it means that it's not starting for another six months or something like that which pushes the construction time on the other end further out so again not that that's a huge um, consideration for the commission but but it is for the neighborhood and and, uh, and the owners and the abutters so um, number of things to weigh out when we think about this um, but we, we have before us a full notice of intent and so we'd have to have some amendments to that if, if we were going to condition just the foundation. Um, Amy, do you want to add something to this? I know you, you and I have had a lot, lot of discussion here and I want to be sure I've presented everything um, pretty clearly. I, I don't think I have much to add. I mean, we're administering the town stormwater bylaw. So we are the, that's we're in charge of administering that bylaw um, in this project. You know, I, I know as Bill pointed out there, a good portion of this project is, is outside of jurisdictional wetland area, but because we get to um, administer that stormwater bylaw, it's, it's we're looking at the entire site when we're reviewing this project. Um, and it's just, it's a big project. And I, I think that people need to get out there and take a look at it. Um, I, th I think if I, if I keep speaking, I'm just gonna repeat what I've said. So I don't need to do that. Okay. Does any of the commission members have any other questions? So I guess does anyone um, will want to make a motion to allow them to 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 start the foundation process while they complete their stormwater process and the rest of the notice of intent? I I'll make, make that, that motion. motion, Frank. <laughs> I'm not. Who started that one first, Richard or Penny? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only the foundation for the house. Right, right. Nothing right. else. But yeah. now, as you pointed out, they're at peril if anything goes yeah. wrong, and and it's not including the pool or any of the um, pertinent areas. Well, they'll be talking about you know as we move forward with the stormwater, the surfaces of the driveway, the way that the pool yeah. and patio yeah. is constructed, or size of it, and all that. We'll still have to. Right. Um, and I think it, right. it needs to be clear that. The commission is not accepting all of that. We're, we're accepting we're not. the rest of it would need to be continued. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just I want the whole. Can it be a dual motion? You can't do that, can you? No. Well, I think you're, we're going to need a second. second. It, I'll so, second it. So, Richard, motion from Richard, second, second from Penny. From all in favor? Oh, you got to get. Uh, uh, Andy and Brandon. Yep. So I've only got a motion and a second. So all in favor of that portion, uh, Andy? Uh, yeah. Yes. And Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. Um, can just because they're asking for an opinion on this, um, and it's a little bit hard to see, I think. Amy's right, we need to get commission members out there. But um, I, I think as Paul pointed out, or, or Bill, um, right now the area of lawn from the house to the, the shed or the other piece of property actually um, dips fairly low. And so what happens often in flooding and rain conditions is that tends to fill up with water. And so the applicants looking for a way to avoid that, if they fill that um, up to absorb water, then you're actually going to create a, a way to displace that water. So I I know that they're going to have to go through some fairly significant engineering to figure out this drainage using the interrupters. But um, 
just as a, a, a sort of a um, non-binding um, recommendation. Does anybody disagree that that would be their first choice is to have them look into that option? I'm for it. I'm for it. All right. I think that's that's a reasonable way to go forward with that. But if the peer review says no, then we have to, you know. So we'll have to come up with another alternative yes. to that. And and again, we still need to be looking at things like Coastal Bank. Um, oh yeah. And some other resources. Yeah. Um, Bill has a hand up. You're muted, Bill. He doesn't realize he's muted. Bill's talking. Yeah, he doesn't he's talking, he's but we can't hear him. There you oh, go. No, what, what, I, what I was saying is fully understand, we'll design the storm scepters, design this, and understanding that it's subject to review of the commission and the peer engineer. And we're going to do our best because we think that's a great utilization. So that's understood if, if the advice comes back different from that. But that gives us the direction of what we can put in place in the first event. And the second thing is if the commission votes to have a peer review engineer, then we can get a check over to Amy and get going on that end also. Um, okay, thanks, Bill. The other piece, and I think maybe we need to take a look at that. In the, in the notice of intent application, um, it depicts the, uh, um, erosion control being on a line that's sort of angular with the lawn. Um, I know right now that erosion control more follows the, the property line. It's down in back of the, that little lawn shed that's out there. Um, is there any concern, Amy, do we want to ask them to do any additional Erosion control, given that this whole site's not being worked on at that time, do we want a second erosion control or or anything different? I don't know, Frank. That with no permit, I guess it's they're at peril, so they should probably uh, execute the BMPs that they they propose. Okay. Hey, Paul. Yes. So I think you should take a look at that. Um, and decide, you know, we know that that's a fairly vulnerable area, um, whether or not a second erosion control or, or something should be more towards the foundation um, on the lawn or something there. If there was a storm or, or whatever through there that any runoff from, from well, that. Chris, what I do is to pull the uh, silt sock uphill so it's uh, closer to the uh, to the foundation for the house. The uh, silt sock we show on our plan isn't the same as the construction fence that's out there. Right. But uh, we do show it going along the easterly and the westerly property line, and then on the downhill side of the uh, of the pool area, which that 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 side we would pull uphill more, so it's closer to the foundation that they'd be working on. I guess my recommendation would be to leave what they have there intact if, if unless, we think, unless we think uh, it's going to be a problem and then maybe a second one or, or, or a second one just below um, the area of work uh, for the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when should we continue this to? How long will we need to get as we and, and I mean, I think that's the other assurance that you've given us, Paul and Bill, is that we'll get this information um, post haste. Uh, so, how soon can we expect? Um, I think I suggest we uh, continue it for at least a month, so so we can do the stormwater work. Okay, so that's September twenty sixth, Paul. Okay. 
I okay. just saying, but that's probably not a reasonable date. The set the 26th, I, I would go to either the first October or the second October meeting. So we can get a round of peer review in. So what's the first one in October? Would be the third. Huh? October 3rd. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue. 184 Edward Foster to October 3rd. Okay, um, and that's Penny. Who wants to second that? Second, Andy. All in favor, Richard? Yes. And Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. 34 Ocean Drive. That's a repair subject. Do we, we don't have a request to continue that again, do we? I think we were waiting for this, huh? For the DEP number, they didn't have numbers last time, Maybe. a bunch of them. No DEP comment and BOH is approved. Yeah. No. So we have Dylan Brady from Grady Consulting on the line for Ocean Ave. Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How are you? Good, good. So this one's a little bit less complicated than the previous ones we've been talking about. Um, this is just a septic repair over at 34 Ocean Drive. Um, the existing system is a cesspool and we're proposing to pump and remove it. And we're proposing um, to install a 30 foot long by 20 foot wide uh, bleaching field in the uh, front uh, area. It's half paved, half lawn. Um, so we're proposing to return everything to the way it was um, existing after the installation of the system. Um, and I opened up to the board if you have any questions. Um. Amy, do you want to, is there anything else for you? Yeah. Um, just yeah, through. on this one, uh, it's Board of Health approved, no DEP comment. Yeah. Title five repair and land subject to coastal storm flowage, barrier beach, coastal dune. It did have a addition on, on the original plan that was revised um, with a requirement to elevate the house. Um, but that was revised, so it's septic only. I think we should be ready to close this one. Okay. Um, Brendan? I have no questions on this. Andy? I'm good. I'm taking an improvement. <clears throat> uh, Penny? All set. Um, Richard? All set. So I'll make the motion to close. Any, is there anybody in the audience before? Are you all set, Frank? I was just trying to look real quick. Um, what's the note in red? Is that just the silk sock? Uh, yes, sir. Yep, the note in red um, just pretty much states that it's in the way of um, all vehicles. So they say that they'll um, reset it every each work day. Got it. Yeah, it's a okay. very narrow road, very narrow uh, road, uh, Frank. Got it. Okay, great. Um, okay. So I'm sorry, did you make a motion, Penny? Yes, I did to close, please. We have a second, second okay. from Brendan. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. Frank, yes. Great. Thank you. 15 Revere Street. Basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, yeah. This is similar. also Dylan. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, very similar project here. Um, there's an existing cesspool. We're proposing to pump and remove it and, and install a conventional system um, 40 foot long by 15 foot wide bleaching field. Um, and same thing, um, we're proposing to return it to the existing additions after we are done with the installation. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I'll open up any comments the board may have. Yeah. Um, Richard? No, it's all good. Penny? It's ready to go. Andy? All set. 
Brendan. I, uh, it's all set. Right. Sorry. Amy, I should have asked you first. I'm sorry. I don't have any comment. It looks good. Okay. And anybody in the audience? Okay. I make a motion to close. Do we have a second? Second, Andy. Thanks, Andy. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Thank you. 115 Hammer Rock Beach Road. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Somebody from Morse Engineering on? We have Greg Morse, I believe, on the line. Good evening. This is Greg Morse, uh, registered engineer, Morse Engineering, representing the property owner, Bill and Sandra Denty. Um, this is a notice of intent for a septic system upgrade at their project address 115 Humrock Beach Road. This was previously opened. It was continued because of the lack of a DEP file number. Mm -hmm. The project is the replacement of a septic system. There's currently a failed cesspool at the property. The proposal is to construct a 1500 gallon septic tank and then a distribution box in a crushed stone leaching field. The leaching field is located underneath an asphalt driveway and would be returned as an asphalt driveway post construction. The septic tank is located in an area of sand and would be replaced with sand um, after construction. The property is in the velocity zone at elevation 19 along the beach and elevation AE 13 over the septic system area. We're not proposing any change in the topography at this location. DEP had no comments. I turn it over to you. Greg, before we get into this one, are you staying on for the rest of these? Yes. You're covering all these because I have one question when we're done with, with the projects. Okay. Okay. Um, Amy? Um, yeah, actually, Greg had already presented this project and we've already gone through it. Just yep. We were just waiting for the DEP number. So I think we're all good with this one. Awesome. Thank it you. It was just... Briefly going to get on, got got the number, no comments. I think we're good to go. Any other members have any questions? No. None. Make a motion. Oh, audience. And the audience. Thanks, Penny. No okay. hands. Okay. I'll make a motion to close. I'll second. Second from Richard. All in favor, Andy? Yes. And Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all the same. Is it 10 Alden Street? <laughs> yep. And so I got to open that one. Yep. On August 22nd, 2022, the Citroen Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citroen Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Allison Rock. Stout, stutter for work related to raising and rebuilding a single family dwelling at location 10 Alden Street situated about others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting will be available on the agenda posted on the town website. Greg. Great, thank you. Uh, for the record again, Gregory Morse, registered engineer representing Allison Rock Struder, the property owner and applicant. Um, this is a raise and rebuild project located at her property 10 Alden Street, which is in the Hummer Rock section of town. The lot itself is approximately 3,200 square feet. It's a mapped barrier beach in coastal dune. It's also located in the FEMA flood zone at elevation AE 14. For reference, this site is relatively flat in topography. Uh, it varies from elevation eight to elevation 10. There's an existing home at the site. The proposal here is to take down the existing home and construct. We lost you. We lost you. Oh dear. The new one, it's largely in the same location, represents the, are you there? Yeah, it kind of cut okay. in and out a little, Greg. Apologize for that. The proposal is to construct a new home 
over the existing home's location. You can see the overlay of the proposed home in the dark black line. The existing home is the light gray line underneath that. Um, it would be elevated up on wooden piles above FEMA floodplain. Again, floodplain at elevation 14, our first floor is at 17.1. We have an erosion control barrier encompassing all of the limit of work. There were no vegetated wetlands on the site or within proximity of the site. Uh, we included the pile layout plan as an appendix to the notice of intent. DEP had no comments on this. We turn it over to you. All right, Amy. Uh, let's see. Barrier Beach, Coastal Dune, land subject to coastal storm flowage, AE 14. I mean, we like to see these things elevated on driven wooden piles, uh, the coastal resource area standards, uh, state building code, um, which is what this is proposing. So this is good. Um, DEP had no further comments, has a DEP number. I think we could be good on this one. Okay. Um, thanks, Amy. Um, Richard, sure. No, I, I, I went down there today. I, I think it's just going to be a good improvement over the whole situation there. I have no questions. Okay. Um, Penny? No, no problem. Looks good. Um, Andy? I am okay. Uh, Brendan? I'm good. Do we have anybody in the audience for this one? I don't see anybody. Okay, Greg, well, what is the, the driveway here? Is it all gravel or? It, oh. it is. Okay, great. And that's planned to re remain, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, okay. <sighs> I'll take a motion to close. Make a motion to close. Um, that's Richard. Yes, I'll second that. Second from Brendan. All uh -huh. in favor. All in favor. Penny? Yep. Andy? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Five, Jason Lane. Um, So you gotta open this, Frank. Yep. Guys got a stack of paper here. Um, on August 22nd, 2022, the Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under chapter one, 131, two. section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and section 30700 Town Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Kathleen and John Murphy for work related to constructing an addition and relocating a septic system in a single family dwelling at location five Jason Lane. Situate about us another interested parties invited to attend. Information access and virtual meetings available on the agenda posted on the town website. Thank you again for the record. Gregory Morse, engineer, Morse Engineering, representing the property owners, Catherine and John Murphy. As was just read into the record, this is a notice of intent for an addition to their single family home as well as a septic system upgrade. The property is located at five Jason's Lane. Um, the lot itself is approximately 46,479 square feet. The wetlands at the property were delineated by Brad Holmes, a professional wetland scientist. Um, they depict a salt marsh, which is the line highlighted in blue on the left-hand side of the screen. Off of that in red is the 50-foot buffer and in green, the 100-foot buffer. Offsite on the left-hand side of the screen again um, is the Gulf River, the Gulf River being a tidal river. The riverfront area associated with it is associated with the mean annual high tide, which is at elevation 4.2. Um, from that elevation 4.2, um, we have a 200-foot riverfront area, which is the purple line in front of the house between Jason's Lane and the existing dwelling. We also have at the property land subject to coastal storm flowage at elevation AE12. Elevation AE12, again, is between the street and the front of the existing dwelling. 
the proposal <laughs> here is to construct a new addition. The new addition is located off the back of the house. It's the bold box that you see off the, the dwelling. Um, existing in that location right now, there already is one bump out off of the house at that location. Otherwise, it is essentially grassed lawn surface at that location. Uh, off of the addition is a deck. That deck extends again over grassed lawn area. That deck um, is 64.6 feet at its closest point to the salt marsh. And then also associated with this project is construction of the new septic system. You'll see that the septic system is located essentially between the house and a detached garage at the property. It's a new septic tank, a distribution box, and a leaching chamber bed. Um, in review of the wetland resources out here with those two projects, um, with respect to the land subject to coastal storm flowage, um, there's minor change in grade over the leaching system. Um, we're not displacing any floodwaters or directing floodwaters to adjacent properties with the grading over the septic system. With respect to the riverfront area, we've provided riverfront area calculations on the plan here showing that um, with the addition on the back of the house and the removal of a uh, patio campground area in the back of the property that were underneath the permittable 5,000 square feet of riverfront area disturbance at the site. And there was an inquiry about whether or not the stormwater bylaw was applicable at this site, which it is not. The site as you see it um, represents an 11% increase in impervious surface at this site. The stormwater bylaw is triggered when there's a 25% or greater increase. Um, and for the record, we did look back. This project was before the commission. I believe it was back in 2017 when the garage was constructed. Um, that was largely constructed over an existing driveway. Um, so asphalt was removed when that garage was constructed. So that 11% takes into account both projects combined. We're not segregating projects out. DEP had no comments on this site. I'd turn it over to you for questions. Okay, thanks, Greg. Th that was uh, really thorough. And I just wanted to say too, um, that it's really appreciated when these plans come in with the colored buffers and resource areas. It, it makes it a lot easier to follow, especially when you're in a Zoom meeting and in these hearings. Um, so thank you for that. And I'm, 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 I'm also I'm, I'm pretty good with this project, I think. Um, and thanks for clearing up that there had been pavement where the garage is because I think without that, it, it, maybe it could have been over. Um, so that's good that you pointed that out. And I think that the resource areas here are, are, are pretty clear with the um, salt marsh. There's a clear break and slope. Um, doesn't appear that the area gets hit by the um, super high tides, despite the fact that it's in land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, so I do think this is an approvable buffer zone project. And Oh, one last thing is also Board of Health. I did hear back from them today and they have approved this. So I think it could possibly even be closed. Great. Um, uh, Andy? Uh, no, I appreciate the thorough explanation. I think that's fair. I appreciate taking things out of the 50s, staying out of the 50 and the 100 riparian. So I think I am okay on this one. Brendan? I am, um, I'm good. Um, Penny? Looks good. I'm all set. Um, Richard? I'm also all set. Do we have anybody in the audience? Seeing none, Frank. Um, I 
Okay, I'm sorry, I stepped out for just a minute. I lost my screen. Should I reboot the whole thing or sign back in? I don't know what to do. Um, I have you people on the side. We can I'm see you. But no. I don't have the screen where the plans were. But I have my own plan, so I guess I'm okay. All right. We'll see if we can. I don't know what happened. Figure it out from our end. I don't either. As long, uh, long as I'm not out of the meeting. <laughs> As long as we can see you, Penny. Oh yes. Um, nope, I think I'm I'm good on that. We'll take a motion. Okay. So I make a motion to close. Um, it's Penny. We have a second. I'll second that. Jason and Brendan. Line. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. Okay. Now. Um, 126. Turner Road. On August 22nd, 6 p.m., the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of Massachusetts General Laws and Section 300, 30700, Town of Citrical Bylaws, regarding the application of Jeff and Wendy Lance for work related to maintenance of an existing gravel driveway and after the fact construction concrete driveway, single family dwelling at 26 Turner Road. About as another interested parties are invited to attend and information to access the virtual meeting is available on the town website. I make a motion to continue this until uh, 26th of September. Oh, the continuing? Well, it says on my agenda. Yeah, no. A Amy, you said correct. It's correct. They're continuing. It. I'll second it. Okay. Um, so Penny's, Richard made a motion. Penny second. All in favor, Andy? Yes. yes. And Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, well, Greg's on, um, Amy and, and Greg. Um, we had a little discussion about Dunbar Lane and Okay. Some cal calculations. Amy, can you is it clear to Greg what what we need for additional information there? Um, a calculation. Well, probably not because we just had a copy of a plan forwarded from Greg Kelleher. But I mean, basically, if there's a request to amend we or minor modification, we we need it spelled out as an official request, and we'll put it on an agenda. Um, but one of the things on the the rough draft of the plan that I did was curious about would would be again if the um change in area was going to impact the um impervious calculations for possible stormwater review or not like what just those numbers i think were called out on the first noi plan but they weren't carried over to this second plan so that was it so greg is that something that you can get a simple sketch and a calculation or and just show it it is i can i can add that calculation to the plan and um yeah if if necessary we can we can make a formal request for an amendment i i want well, if you could send that to amy and i yeah greg right? it's not necessarily that it's a request to amend i would start with a request for minor modification but we would need okay. to take it up at a meeting so you need to it's similar to the other requests for minor modification you guys you know walk the commission through just what the change is and the impact of the change so they can talk about it in an open public um, meeting. Well, why don't you send but not a to public us hearing. Whereas as soon as you can, right? Whereas an amendment is a public hearing, you know what I mean? Or or you can just go straight to an amendment. So if, if, if you think it's going down that road. Okay, I'll, I'll add the information and make a request for a minor modification then. That's okay. what I will do. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, what do we have now? Can I do the quick ones? Sure. I make a motion we accept the minutes of 8-1 as written. I have a second? I'll second that. Um, Brendan, all in favor, Richard? Yep. Andy? Yes. 
Frank, yes. Okay, and we have one order of condition for, I, I make a motion, we accept the orders of condition as written for 228 Central Ave. I'll second it. Second from Richard, all in favor. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm set on those. Amy, Amy has a bunch of certificate of compliances that I guess they're all good. Good people. Yeah, they should be fine. I don't know where she is. Amy, you want to comment on any of those? I don't think so. They're all uh, either septic systems or old. There's a couple old projects. You can tell by the file numbers. So we're getting, you know, we're there's very C of C requests are extremely active right now. I think we're we're more than doubled the number that we normally do in a year. Because everybody's selling their house. <laughs> okay. Oh God. Um all right. And uh what else? Well, I had two things I wanted I, to talk about. Be, be, before you do, Andy, yes. did you did you ask that we discuss something on on um Appleton tonight or I had that said earlier just for an update because it's kind of been not moving for a while. Did they plant anything out there this year? No. Do you know? No. 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 Nothing. Because the 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 oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah the fence and all that is you know that's in, in, in my court more than anything but the the one that I was hoping would, would have moved by now is the commercial license. All right. Um, yeah, Andy, I can follow up with Jim and ask him where that stands okay. in his pile. Are we going to piggyback that with border, with border Street just so maybe that would not to make it, I think it might actually move it along because this seems to be um, more of a I hate to say it, but a little bit more of an interest in, in Border Street. So maybe we could get the town. Um, what are you doing uh, with Border Street, Frank? Well, wh whether we're going to just allow someone to hay it or, or whatever. Oh. But, you know, okay. I hate to say it, but some people just don't even see that and they don't think about it. But I think there's been a little bit more interest from, from folks about what we're going to do with the field at Border Street. Yeah. And uh, so I think if we could go back to the select persons or town administrator and say, hey, I think we should just get these done together yesterday it would be helpful. Um, let's try that, see if we can get some action. Um, okay. okay. All right, Penny, you've been dying to tell us. No, well, well, I have two questions. I have one question, I guess it's for Amy. I was just wondering, where does 151st Parish on the enforcement and cease and desist stand? Um, she's put uh, chairs out there now. She has all the wood chips out. And I heard she's having a problem. Her tree's getting too much water. And she makes me a little nervous that she'll go messing with the stream. I personally think what happened was she took all the vegetation out and now there's more, more water going to her tree. Um, but has anything happened? I mean, it was a couple of months ago that this violation ha happened and she told Craig, take her to court. Are we taking her to court or what? Uh, Penny, there's only so much an office can do, honestly, but nothing has happened on that. Nothing. You're right. I mean, I, I could bump it up on the list and send her a letter, but I, I know from, from the uh, Situate PD that she feels that she's under um, uh, unfair scrutiny, I guess you could say, on, for some reason, uh, but the, re the request is clear. I mean, you had a positive finding, which was requiring a notice of intent, and then I think we sent her a letter I mean, she knows she's what she's doing and what she's doing is not right. I, I haven't physically been on the property to look how far back she's gone, if she's gone further back in. But I know that 
I don't think the fence is moved, which is what we've requested. So no, and um, she has trucks I, out I, there all the time. Yeah, I mean, clearly I mean, the town council is going to be involved in some of our other enforcement matters. So perhaps a letter on um, town council stationary might get her attention more than our letters do. Mm -hmm. Well, I I just I feel as though. If anything, she's probably killed that or is injuring that tree that she was so desperate to save. And um, it's getting too, too much water, I guess. And she's just in total, total violation and arrogant. But okay, moving on. Um, we did pass papers, everyone. Hip, hip, hooray on Mordecai Lincoln property. Now, right. there are the three historic buildings which not quite sure Doug is trying to put together a plan he's from the historic commission of how we're going to they they have to be brought up to snuff they have to be restored that's historics fairly wax mine is the field and getting a parking lot in um and hopefully it is not open to, to the public, so don't go over there. They, they, they have to have a chain across it until we they decide exactly what's going to happen with the buildings and get um, two contractors, historic, con one's historic and one's a good contractor out there to see the work that needs to be done on, on the houses. We can't have the public just traipsing out there. But I am looking forward to hopefully getting Howard out there this fall because I think that is the ideal time to cut the trail on the up path or trail, whichever Howard thinks is best on the outer edge of the property. Um, so you can walk along and see the marsh. And um, so I'm just very excited. It finally does belong to the town. And um, talking about trees, we've got three trees out there. One completely died, the beautiful one next to the house, between the house and the um, garage, there's not a leaf on it. It was one, one of those magnificent trees that, that had like six trunks. I, I mean, it was huge and it was gorgeous. I don't know what kind it was because I'm not a tree person, expert. But that died, and then this two of us are loaded with black ants, so they have to come down. But um, I just wanted to let you know it's mo moving forward, and I'm very excited. Oh, and I did contact Scott about the CR, so he, he's going to start the work on the CR, on, on the field, which will be our responsibility. So, Penny, when you're, when you're talking about CRs, have you heard any more about our other CRs or the CRs yeah, this, that we would yes, do? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Scott's very upset. The whole time, state's very upset. They are all sitting up at the state house waiting for them to hire a reviewer. Scott is trying to not bug them too much because everyone else is bugging them. It's just completely backed up. This has been... Our stuff has been up there almost two years, Frank, waiting for the final review. But there's not a thing anybody can do. It's up, it's in the state's hand. And that includes the Ellis one I sent up there. They don't have any pennies up there to move things along? No, I guess they don't. They need a nudger. No pennies, no dollars. It, it's very upsetting. But like Scott said to me when, when we talked a week or so ago, he said, it's statewide, Penny. Okay. So Sad. that includes the things that are going on with um, with Ellis and stuff then too. Well, yes, that, that's what I said, except Ellis is a little different. So he's hoping possibly to get that through quicker. Okay. But okay. Um, they're just sit, sitting up there, Frank. Sad to say. Okay. Thank you. You're very we have, we have enough of our own projects to do, and yeah, so I know. There's I want you guys to, to do. folks it's to in save the works. 
All right. Well, I don't want to keep everybody here all night. Save your energy for the next meeting because it's not getting any slower. Nope. You want me to make a motion to close? Unless um, anybody else wants to. I suggest we let Penny make that motion. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. A second. From Andy. All in favor, Richard? Yep. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Thanks so any much. News, any news from Jen? She's still home, Frank, I think said, or somebody said. Okay. Um, so. we're, we're, we're monitoring that as best we can and not be too um, pushy. Any day. Yep. yep. Okay. But you know those babies, they come when they want. Well, it looks like Francine's off the list because it wasn't on my birthday, so. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. All, All right, right, guys. Take Have care. Have a nice evening. Right. Night, Take care. everyone. Bye.